Just what is the standard model? Good. The standard model is a terrible name for uh, the most important theory in all of physics. And it is not a beautiful theory in a very deep way. You know, when Einstein invented general relativity, um, not only was it the work of one person, uh, 10 years of really intense work, but the result is just so simple and beautiful. And it's a, it's a pleasure to teach general relativity and to think about it, etc. <clears throat> the standard model is a mess. It came about over many decades of work from many different people, involves many different ingredients. The fundamental idea is that, you know, back in the 1920s or whatever, or earlier, we might have thought that particles and fields are two different kinds of things. We knew about the electromagnetic field. Maxwell and his friends had put together electromagnetism quite successfully in the 19th century. We knew about particles. We knew about electrons and, and protons and neutrons, etc. And so they were thought of as two different kinds of things. But when it turned when you went to look at what happened there were very important experimental results like radioactivity okay radioactivity is an example where particles change into each other which in a purely particle based theory is hard to make sense of. Like, where did the electron go if it turns into another particle, right? Of course, it went into other particles, but it's hard mathematically to describe that. And when people like Enrico Fermi came along and tried to describe the decay of the neutron into a proton and an electron and an antineutrino, he basically said, I th we should think of these particles as excitations in fields also. And so the first step was to unify particles and fields into just fields. Now, there are two different kinds of fields, as it turns out, one of which ends up looking like particles, and the other one ends up looking like fields. The particle one are called fermions after Fermi. The field-like ones are called bosons after Bose, an Indian physicist who corresponded with Einstein. And these two different kinds of particles are absolutely central to physics today. Most of what we think of as matter is fermionic particles, they're taking up space, electrons, quarks, neutrinos. Most of what we think of as forces come from bosons. They can pile on top of each other. So they give us light for photons or gravity for gravitons, etc. And amazingly, um, all of these forces that we know about are related to symmetries in some deep way. I'm going to try to give you the shortest possible thing here because we can go into it in more detail later. But this was a discovery, you know, again, that our paradigmatic force theory that we thought we understood was electromagnetism, going back to Maxwell. <coughs> and that theory has a deep symmetry in it called gauge invariance. And people knew about it. They didn't know whether it was important or not. So in the 1950s, Yang and Mills, two physicists, suggested generalizing the gauge invariant symmetry of Maxwell's equations to bigger kinds of symmetries. And it made predictions that were obviously untrue. So every, no one really knew what to do with this. Like mathematically, really, really interesting and compelling, but clearly ruled out by the data. So over the next couple decades, people figured out how to tweak the theories so that those theories that Yang and Mills invented are, in fact, very compatible with the data. And it turned out to be very, very difficult because there's the weak interactions and the strong interactions. Electromagnetism descends from a higher uh, energy version of the weak interactions. They all act differently for very different reasons. Gravity doesn't fit in. Uh, there's still plenty of things we don't understand, but we do have a predictive model for how all of these known particles and forces behave. We have the fermions, which are electrons, muons, taus, plus their neutrino cousins. And then we have the quarks. We have six quarks, up, down, charmed, strange, top, bottom. And then we have the forces, electromagnetism, weak, strong, gravity. And they all play together. There's the Higgs field that is changing the properties that the other particles have. So it's very intricate, very ugly, and exquisitely adapted to fitting all of the experimental data that we have.